critic. Hmm? Oh, hi, Philbrain. Wait, what? You afraid? I mean, this is supposed to be our crossover review. Yeah, I know, I know, just give me a second. But we've been building this up for years! You know how this is supposed to go! You act all afraid, and I'm all creepy, and hilarity ensues! Yeah, I know, I just need to figure something out! But I have spent months writing our comedic banter! I even wrote a song about why you should join me! And now I think we should do a crossover together, or I'll kill you! Well, this is more important right now! What is it? You know how we're reviewing a Chuck Norris movie today? Of course, it's Forest War. The only film where he literally turns into a bear at the end of it. It's a classic. In fact, I was actually thinking maybe you could do your old joke about shouting, Chuck You know, that bit. That, that's fun. Yeah, but you see, that's the old me. The new me wants to find new obnoxious memes to be associated with him. Like what? I don't know. That's what I've been trying to figure out. What's he been up to lately? Let's see. Oh, apparently a lot of gay bashing. Really? Yeah, he wants to keep gays out of the Boy Scouts, and he hates same-sex marriage, and he's lashed out against what he calls pro-gay school propaganda. Ah, oh, my poor gentle kind of giant. How the world has turned against you since my last review. Wait, you're for this? No, he's just misunderstood. Everyone's jumping to conclusions. Film brain, we have got to cement this image of Chuck Norris that you and I grew up with. But how? This is pretty damning evidence. <sighs> if only the world knew he just wants people to be as perfect as he is. Yeah, I guess. Maybe he just wants everyone to have a little Chuck Norris in them. Wait a minute. That's it! Film brain, my beautiful British buttercup! You just hit the nail on the head! Oh, how? He just wants every man to be like Chuck Norris, right? So, our new slogan should be... Chuck Norris wants to put himself in every man. My god, that's brilliant! And in no way could be misinterpreted! Whenever he walks around shirtless and sweaty, people will think to themselves, Chuck Norris wants to put himself in every man. Whenever he trims his beard in a way that's normally associated with leather bars, people will think, Chuck Norris wants to put himself in every man. Whenever he poses like he's giving a massage to a dummy with surprisingly handsome facial features, people will think, Chuck Norris wants to put himself in every man. Oh, and don't forget about the Boy Scouts. That's right. Chuck Norris doesn't want the incredibly dignified image of the Boy Scouts to be ruined. He's the kind of guy who just wants to help every boy he can. Exactly. That's why we can say with no guilt whatsoever, Chuck Norris wants to put himself in every boy. I feel good about this, critic. Not as good as Chuck Norris does in every boy. So what do you say? You ready to take on one of his greatest opuses? Of course. I think we've done well to restore dignity back to his name. Well then, let's take a look at Forest Warrior. Or if you prefer, Chuck Norris wants to put himself in hard wood. I do prefer, Film Brain. I do prefer. I thought you might. He's gonna love this? This movie was produced at the height of action stars making movies with environmental messages. Well, Chuck Norris and Steven Seagal, anyway. You might recall Seagal directed on Deadly Ground, where he blew up an oil rig for the goodly environment. Yeah, you try and figure that one out. This film, however, is not directed by Chuck Norris, but rather his younger brother, Aaron, the director of the humble, meek, classic sidekicks. I can just see how that conversation went. Hey brother, you did such a good job kissing my ass in the last film. What do you say you do it again? Only this time, dress me up like Tiger Lily. Can I at least get one shot of you not in slow-mo? Don't you ever ask me that again! So are you ready to give yourself to the spirits of the mountain? Only a Chuck Norris is putting himself in it. This is Forest Warrior. We open with a bunch of 90s haircuts listening to a story told by the narrator of Babe. He was married to an Indian girl. She was waiting for him in their cabin on the mountain. She had a fever. And the only prescription is more cowbell. And he'd ridden his horse to death to get back with medicine for her. Yes, after picking up a costume from Epcot Native American World. Seriously, his name is Jebediah McKenna, but I think Jebediah Springfield had more dignity than him in that getup. He doesn't seem to be carrying any medicine either. What was the water jug medicine? Do they have liquid ibuprofen back then? Don't worry, she's not actually a character. A gang of cutthroats hired by timber agents from the Northern Pacific were waiting for him. They wanted his trees for railroad ties, but he wouldn't sell and he wouldn't deal. It was Indian land. Yes, and as we all know, there's no other trees in the Pacific Northwest. Well, none that are stable. We're just here to use the bathroom. 
He could sense the danger, but by then it was too late. He sensed the danger because it was right next to him. How could he miss that guy? Is Chuck Norris too manly to slightly look down? Thankfully, he has the Native American Kung Fu to fight them off with. Jenna fought them in the way of the Indian. Lunging and spinning, grappling and swirling. Isn't that also the way that ballerinas fight? And all those poor cutthroats have are their useless guns. I suppose they can hit them with their handles or use them as spears, but I'm sorry, they're completely useless against Chuck's fists of awesomeness. I'm just amazed he ran a marathon, yet somehow he's still able to take on six armed men. Well, it's Chuck Norris. For him, fighting six guys is like the water you drink in the middle of a run. But in a strange twist, Chuck Norris ends up dying in the first five minutes. What? Yeah, he gets axed off pretty early when they finally remember how to use their guns. Oh god, tell me he doesn't spend the rest of the movie pursuing Demi Moore somehow winning Whoopi Goldberg an Oscar. Nope, instead a bear drags him to Fern Gully, where forest magic literally brings him back to life. Although in reality, this bear would probably be using his beard for toilet paper. It does look unnaturally absorbent. Bear. Wolf and the eagle. You could become all of them. An Indian legend, a shapeshifter. Oh, sorry, children, I accidentally mixed this up with the story of Manimal. But while we're at it, did you want to hear about a hero so powerful he only lasted one season? Well, that's enough for now. Lamest meeting of the Midnight Society ever. Mr. Madison? Yeah? Well, what's a shapeshifter? Well, I'll give you a clue. It's in the fucking word. Has the ability to take the shape of those creatures he loved in life. He never got to see his wife again. That is so sad. Then why, why are you, you smiling? smiling? We see later a town meeting going on about a lumber company who's looking to, what else? Cut down the trees. Can only bring prosperity and hope for our future here in Tiger. Excuse me, Mr. Thorne. Thorne Lumber Company stands to benefit a whole lot. What about our alternatives? What about the wildlife? What about our nature conservancy? What about my cartoonish large lip injections? My harvesting proposal. It's going to change this town around. And that's what we all want, isn't it? Hey, now, I ordered a hoedown. I'm pretty sure this is a hootenanny. That's Terry Kaiser from Weekend at Bernie's as the bad guy, making it clear there are worse roles you can get than playing a dead guy throughout an entire film, even as Bulk and Skull style sidekicks. It's hard to believe that boy comes from these parts. He's driven by nothing but greed. Bring the industry to an economically dead town? Pfft, one asshole. What do they want to do to our mountain? We're just gonna pick it clean, Bonehead. I guess we just gotta let the town council decide if that thorn guy can log the mountain. My dad's a logger too, and he'd never, ever cut down those old trees. Mr. Madison says those trees are six, eight hundred years old. Boy, these kids seem bizarrely interested in the politics of lumber labor. What kid would give a shit about this? They're more concerned about what Pokemon they're going to trade next. Unless the woods are Sudawoodoo trees, I don't think they would care much. Daddy, where have you been? I got delayed. Well, the kid's father, played by Michael Beck, shows up late as apparently he's been getting drunk all night. Yeah, I'd be drinking too if I was in Sanadu. He needs some sleep. She takes him home, sits him on the couch, and prays to, not God, not Buddha, but the mountain to help her in her time of need. For its gift of melting snow, the heart that gives life to our forest, He's trying to find a way to save it. Sorry, kid, but I'm a mountain. I just kind of stand here. Bless mommy, wherever she is. And give her a thought of daddy and me once in a while. We need your help so much. What do you think? Should we send Clarence again? Nah, he nearly destroyed space and time with that alternate reality shit. Good point. Let's just send one of our Dallas door spirits. Oh, you mean like Chuck Norris? That's the one. Amen. So we see the kids are going up for a hike to the mountain unsupervised because any kid can handle a fucking mountain. As her mother watches in confusion about why she has a mushroom cut. 
Now, to be fair, that is more of a jellyfish cut. I'll name the stupid 90s haircuts around here. This, of course, leads to our villains with their amazingly cartoony musical theme. Wow! I prefer more subtle music when Wily e. Coyote is thinking up a plan. And of course, it doesn't help the villain is just as cartoony as the music is. 100 million board feet of lumber up there, and I want it all. Well, they can sizzle in their own grease. <laughs> I couldn't care less about the progress of anyone except Travis Thorn, boys. Can we just cut to the rich Texan guy from The Simpsons whenever he's on screen? <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, 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 yeah. Not like our kids going on their trip is any less subtle. My shoe! Can you believe I'm actually tying my shoe? Oh, what a wonderful adventure that was! Hey guys! But then suddenly one gets lost from the group! Only to literally be found a few seconds later. Hey guys, we're here! What was the point of that? He loses them despite the fact they were only three steps behind him and they just locates them a moment later! Maybe they were building up he was about to be gang raped by Ewoks or something. So while on their playground to Terabithia, they seem to come across something growling inside. Just get up, you fucking idiots! Has the fear rendered your legs immobile? But it turns out it was just a baby bear the whole time. Let me get that rag out you little guy. Oh, rags. Whoa. That's a good name. Boy! <laughs> Good thing he wasn't covered in shit. You were thinking it! By the way, have you noticed something kind of important missing from this Chuck Norris movie? Chuck Norris?! Chuck Norris! He's only gone a few minutes of screen time and hasn't even had any dialogue yet. If I wanted to see kids play with a bear cub, I would have rented the amazing panda adventure. No, you wouldn't have. Well, I would have in spirit. But it looks like the evil loggers have located him! Come on, if he's a fish, you'd have to throw him back. Well, that's not a fish, and it's worth something, no matter how big it is. But he's worth a lot more if he was bigger. Oh, so these loggers also double as random poachers, too! Clearly part of the hiring criteria for this company. Oh now, Film Brain, clearly you should know that when you hire evil henchmen, you need to have all your bases covered. All right, if we're going to hire you on as henchmen, we need to know that you can do more than just follow evil orders. Oh, we can. On top of following orders, we can also kill small animals. And laugh like hillbilly yokels. And make weird faces whenever we get kicked in the nuts! I'm still not convinced. Maybe a little demonstration? Oh, go ahead, guys! <laughs> okay, one final question. Do you fall for gullible traps set up by small children? Oh, sure. Bobby is still walking off a burn mark that was given to him by a second grader. All right, you're hired. Yeah! Give me five, guys! <laughs> Sorry, Bobby. So while the bear makes the sound that Chuck Norris makes when he puts himself into every man... <laughs> not getting that sound out of your head anytime soon. The kids stop the loggers from killing the bear. No! No! Girl, open fire! Don't you know better than to run at a man with a rifle? I should just skin it alive. Not if Eagle Chuck Norris has anything to say about it. As because this movie doesn't have the budget for shape-shifting, we have to be impressed by Chuck's magical jump-cutting power. That's not bad, but you really gotta instead of Look at this kid. She doesn't know she's supposed to look blown away or disturbingly confused. <laughs> Neat, I guess. <laughs> the loggers run away as Forest Jesus comforts the girl by telling her about the bear. I'm so glad you're back. I missed you. It's okay. Your fairy beard mother is here. You were very brave, Austin. You saved his life. Can I be his friend? You are his friend. And when he grows up, you'll be his dinner. But until then, this is perfectly serviceable. Oh, hold on, I got a call. What? 
Was that the movie? Yeah, I think that, that, that is. This music is so bland, it actually sounds exactly like my ringtone. Listen! Well, this gives a new meaning to the term phoned in. I'm not coming back from that one, am I? Nor should you. Meanwhile, our villains continue to tear down the forest. Trees are strong, my lord. Rest them all. Kids up there, school's out. Should have figured on that. It's that tree house. You know, I used to play up there when I was a kid. It was, it was magical. Wonderful place. Get rid of the damn thing. Whoa, there was almost character development there. Oh well, back to your dancing and shooting guns off. Speaking of which, we see the Get Along gang making their oath to the mountain. Again, as kids do. We ask you to leave it, pure as found. We are to it, forever bound. We ask you to leave it, pure as found. We are to it, forever bound. We promise to nobly play in tree houses. Befriend killer bears. To always wear plaid shirts. And always have girly haircuts. Ah! Oh! What the hell was that stuff? Cherish your mountain and all the earth. Love all its creatures. I love how the shot of the mother is just taken from the earlier scene of her outside the petrol station. Has she just been standing there for hours? <laughs> Alright kiddo, I think that's enough playing outside. Time to come on in. Need a little help there? Okay. They continue just to do what normal kids do, but made an oath to do so, so somehow it seems more important, as they all go fishing. Oh, hold on. What one second. Let me guess. That's my ringtone! Yep. This whole score could be downloaded as an app. So while the children go fishing, Chuck Norris saves a raccoon. Just in case you forgot he was Forrest Jesus, while the loggers set up explosives to blow the treehouse up. Because nothing beats a good bit of potential manslaughter. Seriously, he sees them playing in the lake, so he assumes they're not going to be back there. They'll be playing there all day. But it's like a good while before it finally goes off. How is he no fucking anybody could have gone back there by that point? You wouldn't be able to get away with this anywhere else. Um, boss, are you sure it's a good idea to blow up a playground without giving anyone a lick of warning? Oh, please. Who's going to be dumb enough to go all the way up there? Uh, what are we going to do, boss? You're the boss now! Lunch? While the girl goes to the treehouse to gut the fish, Norris comes across the loggers to once again chuck them up. more fight scenes need to be intercut with animals randomly watching the action. It seems to say we know we can't be exciting, so let's at least try and be cute. Yeah, and is it me, or is this the exact same fight scene we saw before just put in front of a truck? Toss, kick, slow-mo, Norris forgetting to have a personality. Not seeing much of a difference. Norris looks into his eyes and figures out the explosives are about to go off. You know, for an omnipotent spirit of the forest, don't you think you would have noticed a little hiccup like that? <coughs> what the hell? ATM! It's a Norris! It's a Norris! Why does he even need to turn into an animal when we've already established he can teleport anywhere and anytime at will? He's only got 15 seconds! Okay, very long 15 seconds, but still! The treehouse blows up and everyone thinks the girl is a goner. 
Which she kind of is, but Norris is there to once again bring her back through the exact same effects again that I think they originally stole from Ghostbusters in the first place. How are you feeling, Austin? Was I sleeping? Yes, you were sleeping. You might also be able to turn into a cockroach now, just don't be alarmed. Is this your home? The forest is my home. Have you lived here a long, long time? A long, long time. Oh, your acting's making me go to sleep. Good night. Once the girl's father finds out, he rushes to the treehouse thinking that he's too late. We're not doing any good. Nothing will feel like that. <laughs> Jesus Christ, guy, it's a fucking Chuck Norris movie, not a Sally Field flick. I know, right? The dog in Feed the Kitty gave a more subtle performance. <laughs> so it looks like the kid is okay as everybody tries to figure out what's going on with that forest. It's not haunted, I know that. Enchanted, maybe. Oh, sure, many hauntings look nicer if you just call them enchanted. Poltergeist is a family movie if you just use different terminology. <laughs> Charming. <laughs> Playful. <laughs> Curious. <laughs> Whimsically delightful. But more bad news seems to be on the horizon. Thorn's on the move. He managed to get a temporary permit. He can start cutting the trees at noon tomorrow. Temporary permit? What is this, the purge? You can suddenly perform illegal activity as long as you have a note? EPA, anyone? So Thorn is on his way to chop down the forest. Don't forget your bow, my kids! And, seeing how this is a 90s kids film, we of course have to rip off the Home Alone ending. With traps set up all over the place. Hell, you could tell the Wizard of Oz in the 90s and you would still have to have a Home Alone ending. You just attach the bucket of water to a string or something. However, where Home Alone was quick and well paced, this is nerve-wrackingly slow as molasses. I think somebody's trying to pull my chain. Ow! <laughs> we got thumbtacks in the log there, Mr. Thorne. It's the green weenies. Weenies? Environmentalists. Get it. They're out there. Continue, Mr. Williams. Come on, you can take care of your boo-boo when we get back. Let's go. Jeez, how long does this go on for? It's a Chuck Norris movie, and yet all the Chuck Norris scenes have been replaced with kids, Fidel Castro, and Peter Parker's landlord. You gutless environmental punks! <laughs> Travis! Whoa! Well, when all else fails, just kill the bastard. I'm sure anyone can survive being tied to a log, rolled down a cliff, and tossed into a six-story drop. Go, Murder Squad! And the kids distract the rest of the loggers by playing that awesome mix following one cassette. <laughs> points to the guy who air guitars with a chainsaw. This is both stupid and magical. Get in here and drive this thing. Oh, but sure. We're gonna cut down the forest. We can't let him do that. Well, what are we gonna do now? We've gotta stop them. A oh, brilliant strategy. Thanks, Patton. Well, it looks like I gotta break my killing kids rule, which I never had. I'll let you have a free shot, huh? Come on here. Give me one right here. Come on, come on, right there. Well, if I learned anything from Tom and Jerry cartoons, this never backfires. Whoa, I so did not set myself up for that. Yerp, Chuck Norris is back again. It happens so rarely, I have to keep note of it. Ah! Ah! <laughs> you wouldn't be so hot without your slow-mo. That's right, Internet. I just stopped a chainsaw with my bare hands. I'm just trying to make these memes easier for you. 
Gee, Film Brain, what do you think he's gonna do to him this time? Oh, I don't know, about the same thing he's done every single time. Oh, you mean pick, pick him up and, and toss, toss him? him. Oh, Jesus, where'd he learn his fighting? The school of hot potato? Of course, the police arrive to arrest them, but Thorne runs away and asks Norris for help because, yeah, he surely looks like someone who'd be on his side. I gotta get over this mountain over here, all right? I'll give you 10,000 bucks if you can help me out, because I got guys chasing me. Why are they chasing you? Because I want to cut down a few trees, okay? Well, gee, when you put it like that, it makes the plot sound pretty ridiculous. <laughs> Look at that! He used the magic of the mountain to throw him towards a tree, stop at the tree, headbutt himself, and then land face up even though he is thrown face down. Forest Jesus works in mysterious ways. The only magic I believe in is the magic of the almighty dollar. Well, I think that goes without saying. You said yes to a Chuck Norris movie. But the only dreams you believe in are the ones that you can buy. Well, that's the only kind there are. Well, if there's nothing I can do to change your mind, then maybe I can. And there it is. They only had enough money to do one on-screen morph, and it is glorious. I don't even know what to say here. It's one of the most famous Chuck Norris moments ever. He, right in front of her eyes, turns into a bear. Even Thorn is so awestruck, he appears to be mooing. <laughs> He's making so many weird sounds, he could be a cereal mascot. One bite of Goofy Oils will make you go, <laughs> So the police find a rest Thorn. The girl's father is made deputy again because he proved he could be sober for a couple of hours. And they rebuild the treehouse with, presumably, Thorn's lumber? Yeah, wait a minute. Man, they'll high five anything. Yeah, water! High five, bro! Come on, bro! Thank you, Mountain. We hang this eco friendly Denny's placemat in your honor. But then the girl, you know, the one who was snickering at the death of Norris's wife, looks up and sees the two of them together. Wait a minute, if she was with him the whole time, how come she didn't help out? Well, remember, Film Brain, Chuck Norris wants to put himself in every man. Getting a woman involved would just be an abomination against God. Well, I guess I see your point. Really? No! Here's to having a Native American movie with only one Native American shown for two seconds and not given any lines of dialogue. Yay! That was Forest Warrior, and to say the least, this is a baffling the odd movie. For a start, it's a Chuck Norris movie where he shows up for maybe all of about 10 minutes at best. Hell, I think Steven Scouse appeared more in some of his director video movies. It mostly seems to just be copying the most popular trends of the time, like protecting the environment and Home Alone, and slapping them together into one cheesy mess. I mean, who exactly is this aimed at? Kids who really like Walker, Texas Ranger? Does anyone want to see Chuck Norris stroking his ego by playing the benevolent god of the forest who is also really good at kicking people in the face? It just plays like a country music version of Captain Planet, especially since it's so cartoonish and over the top, you'll probably laugh yourself into a hernia well before the majesty of Chuck Norris becoming a bear. It's pretty stupid and drenched in 90s cheese, but as stupid kids films go, yeah, it's pretty standardly stupid. But like Film Brain said, the few scenes that are so bizarre and dripping with Chuck Norris's ego are far too funny to overlook. So, if you want to know about the spirit of the mountain as, say, told by Chuck Norris's karate commandos, then this is the good one to check out. Well, Film Brain, it's nice after all these years we finally got a chance to do a crossover together. Indeed, Chris Hick. But, you know, part of me does feel bad about what we said about Chuck Norris earlier. Yeah, maybe we haven't done enough to restore his image like we thought. Maybe we could give him a theme song. Yeah, something that kids can relate to but can also teach a good lesson as well. Got any thoughts? Well, one... Don't you put it in your mouth, don't you put it in your mouth. Don't Film you Brain, I love you. And I do mean it in that way. Oh, you. I'm a nostalgia critic, and remember! Don't you put it in your mouth, don't you put it in your mouth, don't you stop it in your face, don't stop it in your face.